There was a bit of talk in the last month about creating a rule to force drivers to take a minimum of two pit stops per race to improve a race's overall interestingness. I thought it would be interesting to have a look at how that might work and why some people think that's a good idea. So first, let's create a very simple model of how tyre strategies work, and I mean super simple. I'm going to strip away all the equations and multivariable modelling that goes into planning a race and just think about the basics of constructing your strategy. So let's assume a 30 lap race for this model. And we can use little blocks to represent units of time. It doesn't really matter how much time each block represents, as you'll soon see this model sort of lives in its own world. Let's say the soft tyre gives lap times of seven of these units for the first six laps of its life. Then the lap times get longer and longer as the tyre dies off. The medium tyre is slightly slower, but it lasts longer before it drops off and the lap times increase. The high tyres again are a bit slower, but they last even longer than the mediums. OK, so let's say a pit stop in this model costs you 10 units of time, so now we can have a quick look at two stop strategies versus one stop strategies in this model. On our one stop strategy, we can do 9 laps on the medium tyre before it drops off, and then we'll do the rest of the race, 21 laps, on the hard tyre. The end of our hard stint has this drop off start to kick in, but A, we did save an entire pit stop, and B, maybe we can manage that wear by backing off in general throughout the stint to extend its life a little bit. We have that option. Our two stop strategy might be that same 9 lap stint on the mediums, and then another 9 lap stint on the mediums, and then just 12 laps on the hard tyre. So here we, we did have to take two pit stops, but we're running on the faster tyre for longer, and we never hit the drop off on the hard tyre, so we could push for pretty much all of our hard stint without worry. And if we add up the total times of these two strategies, we can see the two stopper is a bit faster than the one stopper here. So a two stop strategy is a no brainer, right? Well, not quite. See, while yes, overall total times suggest the two stop being the fastest, we're not taking into account how things play out on the track. Let's have a look at how this would look on a lap chart. So this line chart just shows the total time taken over the course of a race. This pink line represents our two stop strategy, and the blue dotted line represents our one stop. Obviously for the first nine laps they're on the same tyre, so race identically. They pit together here. But now for the next nine laps, pink is on a faster tyre, so is accelerating away from blue on the hard. And on this chart, pink is lower down than blue as they're taking less time to complete each lap. However, on lap 18, pink has to pit again, so now falls behind blue. Pink can't make any headway on blue really until the older age of blue's tyres start to kick in at around lap 26. This idealised lap chart shows that pink overtakes around lap 28, just a couple of laps from the end. But we're forgetting. Overtaking isn't easy. We know this very well. Pink could easily get stuck behind blue in these last couple of laps and not be able to overtake. This is particularly true if blue takes it a bit easier through their stint to extend the life of the hard tyre. Pink will catch them earlier, but blue will have more life left to fight with. And while pink is stuck behind blue, that takes extra life out of pink's tyres as they start sliding around and overheating in blue's dirty air. Plus, this race isn't just about pink and blue. Pink doing an extra stop puts pink at the risk of not only extra traffic, but also having to overtake more front-running one-stoppers than just blue. Two-stopping may be faster in a vacuum, but it's a lot riskier, and if the time difference is marginal, it's often just not worth it. That's why we see a lot of races lately where most cars go for a one-stop strategy, and then spend most of the race conserving their tyres for the longer haul. There's less racing and a lot more tyre management. Kind of the opposite of what fans want, but it's the only sensible approach in the race. You can't really blame them for going that way. So, what if we force teams to two-stop then? We can do this in two ways. One is the way Pirelli tried, and arguably failed to do this year, which is by constructing the tyres such that the life of the rubber makes it more sensible to do two stops. There's a couple of methods to pulling this off. One is to build a cliff into the tyre performance. That means that after a certain point the tyre just dramatically gives up and your lap times go woomph. This essentially creates a hard limit on tyre life. Seven laps for softs, twelve for mediums, or whatever. Alternatively, you could design tyres such that the speed at which they lose performance creates natural crossover points, so that after a certain number of laps the harder compounds of tyres become faster. There's no dramatic cliff, but instead a wider amount of time in which you could think, OK, it's probably worth getting off these tyres now, I'm losing too much time. Pirelli used to go for the tyre cliff option, which did actually generate plenty of exciting races with mixed strategies and overtaking. But they steered away from this philosophy as some people complained the tyres were too much the focus of a race, and there was some risk around tyre blowouts, highlighted particularly at Silverstone in 2013 when it was like a rubber fireworks night out there. What's being suggested now though is that, instead of trying to force the teams into two-stop strategies by reducing the tyre life, why don't we just say you have to do at least two pit stops? Right now we have a mandatory single pit stop by virtue of the two compound rules, so why not just tell them to do two pit stops instead? 
This means one-stop strategies go out the window, so now we can think about how two-stop strategies might work against each other. We could stick with this medium-medium-hard strategy that worked out so well before, or we might go with a slightly faster soft-medium-hard strategy, which I'll colour in green. Even though it does bring you out behind pink every time you stop, pink then pits before you close up and need to overtake them, so that could be good if you're not held back by a sneaky wingman extending their stint. Choosing which strategy to go on will depend on what's going on around you. You might change your medium-medium-hard to a medium-soft-hard strategy if you think you can use this fast middle stint to pull off some undercuts. It'll only work if you don't spend those 7 laps stuck behind anyone at any point though. We could even try for a 3-stopper. Soft, 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 medium is by far the fastest ideal strategy on paper, but in reality it would struggle against a 1-stop, because you'd have to keep re-overtaking lots and lots of cars every time you pitted, which would kill your momentum and probably your tyres. Against 2-stoppers though, you might just take the risk if you were feeling racy and the traffic was good. Basically, enforcing two pit stops could move strategies back to the kind we had during the refuelling days, where the advantage for stopping more times but keeping the car light would far more often outweigh stopping fewer times with a heavy car. Again, this is just a simple model to explain the thinking behind the idea. It gets a lot more complicated in practice and requires the tyres to be made such that their degradation complements this kind of strategy. The downside here is that more pit stops and mixed strategies could lead to a lot of the position changing happening through the pits and not on the track. But then again, we're not seeing much on-track action anyway at the moment, so maybe this is a good way to inject some excitement into the race. Maybe two stops will give cars on faster tyres the ability to overtake their harder tyred rivals. It's not a fair fight necessarily, but then the leading car needs to get fiercely defensive to force their own strategy to succeed, and that's often a lot of fun. There's certainly a lot to think about. Obviously the best solution is to find a way to get the cars to be able to fight each other on track. That way a slower one-stop strategy cannot rely on those faster two-stoppers being unable to overtake them. Either way, it would be nice to see the end of the one-stop, conserve-and-block strategies. Music